So what do you say we spend a little time in the garden today? All right, all right, all right. So in our last video, I left you hanging a little bit. We were talking about this plot here where we're doing some experimental no-till gardening and comparing that and the practices here to this plot that's in front of me here that you can't see where we're doing our traditional gardening the way we always do it, tilling in the compost using buried drip tape and all that good stuff. In that video, we explained why this so-called experiment isn't really scientific, but it is what it is. We're just comparing two systems here. We also explained why we're not using mulch back here to cover up this compost. And we explained why we're not gonna try to interseed cover crops between these rows. We also explained the real reason that we're doing this comparison or experiment is to test out this idea of if we can create some natural fertility here where we don't have to supplement with additional fertilizers. And so today we wanna to dig a little bit deeper into the discussion and try to explain why the plants in this plot here look a little bit better than the plants in this plot here. And we're also gonna talk about which system maybe requires more water, requires more effort weeding, and also address some concerns I have going forward with using this technique in this particular plot and what restrictions that may place on me as far as what I can actually grow here. So as I mentioned in the previous video, we're not really doing this comparison to compare weed pressure between plots because our weed pressure here is pretty minimal in both of these plots. The reason we're doing this comparison is to see if over time we can develop the biology in this soil to the extent that we don't have to fertilize the plants here, even for some heavy feeders that we like to grow, you know, corn, onions, things like that. And because we don't have the same crops or the same varieties in both plots, we can't really quantitatively measure anything, but we can look at the plants and tell that these guys here in the no-till plot are kicking along a little bit better than the ones in the plot where we tilled in the compost and are using the drip tape. Now we had a lot of people that commented on the first video we did about this no-till plot and these were people who have been doing no-till gardening or some semblance of it for a while and they mentioned that we weren't going to see any significant results from this plot till maybe a year or two down the road that it would take a while to kind of establish that biology there and i understand that and that's why we're going to have to do this for a couple years it's going to have to be kind of a long-term experiment or comparison so if we accept the fact that this no-till plot here is not just booming with biology like we would expect a no-till plot to be then how do we explain that these plants are looking a little better and if we think about it i think it's pretty simple so here we had a cover crop of iron clay peas which is a nitrogen fixer and the other plot we had a cover crop of sunflowers now sunflowers make a great cover crop they kind of cleanse the soil and if you plant them thick enough they're going to give you some nice ground cover erosion control weed suppression but they're not really adding a lot to the soil with the exception of the organic matter that we add once we chop up all those stalks but here with the iron clay peas it's a nitrogen fixer so we're getting some nitrogen fixation there we're adding some nitrogen to the soil from the atmosphere there and because we mowed down that iron clay pea cover crop and then tarped it for about six weeks, we kind of trapped all that nitrogen in this plot here. We didn't lose any to any runoff from rain or anything like that. Everything was kind of in the soil there. We didn't till it or anything. We just mowed it, put that tarp on it for several weeks. So we kind of maintained that nitrogen supply there. I believe. The other obvious reason why this plot's probably doing a little bit better than the other one is we added a lot more compost here. We put around three tons of compost here, probably about one and a half tons on the other plot. We had to put a lot more here because we were covering up all that pea debris, whereas in the other plot we were just going to till it into the soil so we didn't have to worry about, you know, covering up a bunch of debris. So the fact that we used a nitrogen fixing cover crop here and we used a lot more compost, you know, we put it in there at least a few inches thick, probably three inches thick, and we're actually just planting into the compost when we put these transplants in the ground. I think those are the two primary reasons why this plot is looking a little bit better right now. As I said, I don't, I don't 
think you know I agree with a lot of our subscribers I don't think that natural fertility is quite there yet and the reason it's doing a little better can be easily explained by the cover crop we had here before and the amount of compost we used now let's talk about is this worth the effort does this take more time than doing it the way we traditionally do it by tilling in the compost and putting down that drip tape yes it does initially and this is what everybody wants to know you know is it worth the time everybody that's you know growing their own vegetables most of us are working like myself you got limited time in the garden and uh you want to make the most of your time in your garden and you don't want to be doing extra stuff that you don't have to do so putting down as much compost as we did considering the fact i don't have a tractor we did it by hand putting down three tons of compost takes a lot longer than putting down one and a half tons of compost and putting it down in an even layer like we did there you know that thick making sure we covered everything evenly covered all that pea debris that did take a lot more time in this plot than it did to put compost in the other plot the other thing is watering so here like i said we got that thick layer of compost there and our transplant plugs are only about you know that tall or that deep so when we're planting we're planting directly into that compost now this compost is really really good stuff it's got a really good nutrient analysis on it however it's really fine as well and it doesn't necessarily hold moisture that well now below the compost where that soil has not been disturbed at all that is holding moisture really really well and that's the goal here is to create an environment that holds moisture better because we're not tilling and drying out the soil and hopefully we get some natural aeration in the soil from all the biological activity there but because we're putting those plugs into that you know real fine compost initially before the roots are able to get down to where you know that moist soil is below the compost we had to water this a lot more than we did the other plots. We're doing this with the overhead sprinkler here and we had to kind of baby those transplants a little more and give them a lot more water initially until those roots were able to reach that soil layer below the compost where there was ample moisture. So it took a lot more water here and a lot more frequent waterings right after planting than it did when we we're planting on that berry drip tape, which is no big surprise. Now, as far as the time to maintain and keep these two plots in good shape, I would say it's probably about the same. I did mention on the previous video, because we're overhead watering this, we get a few more small weeds popping up. So we do have to come in and, and weed this one maybe one and a half times more frequently than we do the other plot where we're just putting water right underneath the plants. But I don't think that time is very significant. So the actual weeding and maintenance time it's pretty similar between the plots now if you have really high weed pressure that would probably you know be increased exponentially but seeing that we don't have very high weed pressure the maintenance time between these two plots is really not that uh, you know there's not a significant difference between the two now let's talk about some of my concerns going forward with planting certain crops with this no-till system here so let's start off with potatoes irish potatoes so if we plant Irish potatoes in here, we're gonna plant them, we're gonna make a furrow in the soil, we're gonna plant them in that furrow, and then as they grow, we're gonna throw dirt to those plants or heal those plants. And, and I don't see why we can't do that with this system here. But once we're done with those potatoes, we end up with all these hills and valleys in this plot here from where we've healed those potatoes. Now what I usually do is once I you know, harvest my potatoes, I pull the plants out of the plot because I don't want any recurring diseases there then I'll just take my tiller and run through there and the tiller does a great job just in one pass of kind of re-leveling that soil however if I'm not going to till this plot then that means after I grow potatoes or a crop that is healed somewhat I'm probably gonna have to come here by hand and re-level everything that's certainly going to be much more work if it's going to be worth it or not we'll just have to see but potatoes are, are one of those crops that concern me a little bit with this system another crop where i'm not so sure how well it would do with this system is sweet corn we grow a lot of sweet corn around here now i grew sweet corn in this plot this past summer so it's going to be another year or two before i plant any more corn here so we'll have plenty of time uh, to let this develop before that happens but i'm not 100 positive that this natural biology that we're going to create is enough 
or has enough nutrients in it to feed a heavy feeder like sweet corn. We'll just have to see. If I do decide sweet, to grow sweet corn in this plot, I'm eventually gonna have to start burying drip tape in here. We, you can't really get water to sweet corn or adequate water to it uh, once it gets up tall there, even with the overhead sprinkler, there's not enough water to really get down to the root. So uh, we will have to start using some subsurface tape in here if we're gonna grow things like sweet corn. Another one is squash or winter squash or even nightshades, things that tend to get a lot of diseases if they have a lot of overhead moisture. So if we're gonna grow squash or we're gonna grow pumpkins or you know, butternut winter squash in here, we're also gonna have to use subsurface drip tape at some point because we definitely don't wanna just be throwing a lot of overhead moisture on those guys because we'll end up with powdery mildew and downy mildew out the wazoo. With these brassicas and these lettuce here that are planted now, the overhead water doesn't really seem to bother them or create a lot of disease problems like it does with cucurbits and nightshades. In addition to the watering issues with cucurbits and nightshades, we also have some pest overwintering issues at times. So down here, it doesn't really get cold enough to kill any insect eggs or fungal spores that may be in the soil. And so when we grow squash, winter squash, pumpkins, and nightshades like peppers or tomatoes, crops that are highly susceptible to pests around here, whether it be squash bugs or leaf-footed bugs, you name it. We've gotta be real careful to make sure we remove that plant debris from the garden. We don't wanna leave that many of those insect eggs in the soil because they'll just overwinter and become an even worse problem in future years. And tilling actually helps to reduce that overwintering effect in the soil that the those eggs can have so disturbing that soil with the tiller not a lot but a little bit is going to keep those eggs from overwintering and those fungal spores from overwintering in the soil as much so if we're growing tomatoes or peppers or cucurbits here it's going to be interesting to see uh, if if that effect is increased because we're not tilling this we'll just have to be even more diligent about removing the plants and all plant debris out of here because since we're not disturbing the soil uh, I could see where we would have some issues in future years with uh, you know insect eggs fungal spores increasing our pest populations another possible minor issue I see may be occurring in the future is direct seeding in this plot here so everything that's in here now was transplanted and, and that was done intentionally. The compost I get is pretty fine, but it does have some little chunks in it. Now they break apart pretty easily, but uh, it does, it is a little chunky in some spots and that's not necessarily what I like to direct seed in. I like to direct seed in some really nice tilt usually because we get better germination that way. So without tilling, I'm not 100% sure how I would kind of create that tilt or break up those compost clumps. I guess I could kind of rake where my row is and kind of smooth it out and, and tamp it down and, and, and get some nice firm soil. Not really sure how I would direct seed into that with, with some clumps and stuff, but we can probably figure that out. That's another thing that's probably gonna, you know, require more effort than doing it the traditional way where we till in the compost and then we just got this nice tilt for direct seeding. Another thing is just actual crop turnover and time and how all that is gonna work. So let's take, for instance, this broccoli and cauliflower back here. What I normally do when a row or two of broccoli or cauliflower is done is I'll go in there with my loppers and I'll just clip off that stalk right at the soil level there. I'll take the plant, throw it in the woods, throw it in the burn pile. Don't want that in the garden. And then I'll add some more amendment. If I'm planting another vegetable crop, if I'm planting a cover crop, we just come in and we till it up and it kind of chops up those stalks that are in the soil there. Obviously I can't do that here because we're not gonna till. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna address it yet. I think I may end up still cutting those stalks at soil level so they don't grow back, but they're still there. Still got all that kind of mycorrhiza and plant roots there. And then just coming along and planting between the rows that are there now. So kind of just alternating my planting. That could be a little tricky because everything's not gonna come out of here at one time, but I think that's probably the easy solution right now. 
another thing is when I, I do plant a cover crop in here next whenever that may be you know early spring next summer or so it's going to take a lot more time to turn over these plots than it would if i'm tilling with the, the tiller if i want to turn over a crop real quick a cover crop mow it down till it in i'm done with this situation i have to wait on that tarp to kind of do its thing to kind of you know kill those plants off kill that cover crop off so we can come in here and plant something else so I do have some concerns going forward as far as how we're going to do certain things in this plot based on the way we normally grow things year round around here. But I'm willing to do it for the sake of experimentation, for the sake of this channel, because I do really want to see if we can just create this natural biology here that feeds the plants just as well as if we were supplementing with fertilizer. And if you've got any ideas on how we might solve some of those problems, like I mentioned, some of those concerns we have for this plot, definitely put those in the comments below. If you are an experienced no-till grower, do things this way, or maybe do it a little bit different, let me know how you handle those situations as far as, you know, re-leveling the soil, turning over crops, all that stuff. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and ring that bell so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy this one, check out these other two videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. We'll see you next time.